is um and then the next one everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with part one of my June wrap-up for 2021. I read a total of 21 books but I'm only going to be talking about 20 of them because one was a textbook that I had to read front to back for my college course but you guys don't want to hear that so we're just gonna not talk about it. So these are the first five actual books that I read this month. So without further ado, let us get started. Wow. The first two books are actually part of the same series. The first one in the series is War Girls by Tochi Otnabuchi and I gave this a three out of five stars. This takes place in 2172 in a war-stricken Nigeria that is filled with radiation and fear. It follows two sisters, Oni and Ify, who must fight in order to make it out alive and it's like their story. I don't know what it is about this but I just was not feeling it. There were a lot of subplots in this book that I found very hard to follow and I'm not really sure if that's just because my little brain is not big enough to follow those many storylines or if I wasn't paying enough attention like I have no idea it just was too much for me. I personally didn't really know much about the Nigerian war before I picked this up so I do think that it was a worthwhile read to learn more about that historical event. I also really liked the like futuristic twist that the author put on it. I think that the biggest complaint that I have about this book was that it was very lengthy and it felt like it could have definitely been cut down a little bit and still got the same points across. Like it just started dragging after a while. I do think that the technology in this book was really interesting. Like the advancements that the characters were able to go through was very intriguing, although kind of confusing at times. I can definitely see why a lot of people love this book and this series because it is interesting. I just found it to be way too slow for my liking, which made me not care about the characters because I just wanted the book to be over but I definitely do recommend checking it out because I know that a lot of people do really love the series. And then the next book that I read is Rebel Sisters. This is the second book in that series. Obviously same author. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It takes place five years after the war took place in the first book and Ify is now 19. She is living in the space colonies and she is working to become a doctor. And then back in Nigeria, Uzo, who is a synth who can't remember who she is, is working with a, an aid worker in order to preserve the memories of the children who were lost to the war. And then a mysterious virus breaks out on the space colonies, so Ify and Uzu's worlds collide, and it's that story. I definitely like this more than War Girls, but it still definitely was not my favorite thing that I've read this year. I liked the theme of trying to work through your trauma and how that looks different for every person. I also really like how much Ify's character grew from the previous book, although I did find the chapters from Uzu's point of view far more interesting than Ify's. There was just such a mystery behind Uzu's character that you don't really get with Ify because you know who she is, but with Uzu you get to learn more about her as the story progresses and she becomes more self-aware. It did take me a little while to become invested in this story which was surprising to me because I read the first book and then immediately jumped into the second one so you'd think that I would be able to like immerse myself into that story no problem but alas that was not the case. I just didn't really care which I guess kind of makes sense because I didn't care much for the characters in the first book but I don't know there was just a disconnect for me. The story was also just very predictable so I think just at that point I was kind of over the whole thing so yeah very average three out of five stars. Next up Tell Me When You Feel Something by Vicky Grant. I gave this a three out of five stars. So this follows Vivian and Davida who are simulated patients for the local medical school. Basically they are given scripts and a list of like ailments that they have and they have to act as if they have this disease or disorder and the doctors have to treat them is like practice for them. A video of Viv surfaces after she took a pill at a party which lands her in a coma and people start speculating that it was an overdose. Davida is convinced that Vivian would not take anything that 
she is not supposed to and so she decides that she's going to get to the bottom of what happened to her friend and it's like the story of that so i thought i was really gonna like this the concept and everything was really interesting to me but it was just very average very predictable so it was kind of a disappointment to be honest I did really like the multiple point of views. The chapters are very short, so it didn't seem to drag on. There was also police transcripts from interviews woven into the story, which was really interesting. And then we also got chapters from different timelines, so before the party and after the party, and it was just a very interesting way to try to piece the mystery together. The twist at the end wasn't really much of a twist, like I called it very, very early on in the story, so that was probably the biggest disappointment. I also think that this book should have trigger warnings for sexual assault and grooming because it does go into a lot of detail with that, which I was not expecting. Even though it says hashtag me too movement, I didn't think it would be that much. So... I don't know. I just think that you should be aware of what you're getting into, so if sexual assault and grooming is a trigger, then maybe avoid this. But yeah, very average, very predictable, 3 out of 5 stars. Next up is Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil. This is another one I gave 3 out of 5 stars. This is set in 1850 when the Great Exhibition in London is starting. Iris has always dreamed of becoming an artist, so when a famous painter asks her to become his model, she agrees in exchange for art lessons. Then Silas, a curious taxidermist, and and Iris meet in a chance encounter. For Iris, this is just a fleeting moment in her life. She doesn't really think much about it. But for Silas, it is a turning point and he becomes very obsessed with Iris and her strange collarbone and it's like the story of that. This book is extremely slow. It wasn't until about 75% into the book until anything really started to happen. There's a lot of backstory and character development that you have to go through before it feels like it's worth continuing to read. I do think that it was an interesting examination of love, lust, and obsession and the differences between those. This book is definitely a character-driven book and you do start to feel for the characters by the end, but it just takes so long long to get there. The book also becomes very dark by the end of it. The creepy atmosphere is honestly what kept me reading because I was just like, how the heck is this gonna end? Because it takes a turn that you're just like, whoa, dude, chill. The ending was very abrupt and you never really get any closure with these characters, so I think that that was very disappointing as well. There should also be a huge trigger warning for animal cruelty, like a big one, so just be aware of that going in because I was not and I was just like uh, uh, and I didn't like that part so yeah three out of five it was all right but definitely be aware of the animal cruelty. And then the final book I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is In the Ravenous Spark by A.M. Strickland. I give this a five out of five stars. It was definitely my favorite book of the month, probably going to be my favorite book of the year. It was just so freaking good. It follows Rovin, who is a pansexual blood mage who has been hiding her power since the death of her father many, many years ago. So when her powers are unexpectedly revealed, she is taken to the crown in order to be assigned a undead warrior who is supposed to keep her powers in line. So wishing to escape, Rovin turns to two people that she needs to learn to trust in the palace. And as time goes on, they discover a secret that they utilize in order to start a rebellion between the undead and the living worlds and it's like the story of that. I was initially so excited when I heard about this book because it features a polyamorous pansexual blood mage and I just thought that was like the coolest thing ever and I was not disappointed. I fell in love with this book. I fell in love with these characters. It is just such an addictive story. The representation in this book is so casual and I just loved it so much. Rovin is the pansexual blood mage. She is just so fierce and feisty and just cares so deeply about her family and friends. And then Lydia is a lesbian princess who when you first meet you're not really sure if you can trust her but she definitely grows on you as the story progresses. And then Jaffa is 
adorable. I absolutely loved them. They are asexual and non-binary. They are also a prince and they just stole my heart right from the first time they were on page. The found family aspect of this book is just so well done and like I said you truly fall for these characters and just they become a little part of you as you're reading. I also think that the magic system was so cool. Basically the bloodline of the blood mages are passed down through generations but in order to get your powers, like the full extent of them, it kills the original owner of those powers which just fascinated me. I also loved the concept of the undead spirit warriors. I found them so interesting but also very creepy at the same time. Learning about Ivrilus was very interesting and I loved learning his backstory as the story progressed. I am definitely intrigued with where the story is going to go because we're kind of left on a cliffhanger and I just need to know what the heck is going to happen next because like I said I fell in love with these characters and I just adore them and just need to know where they're ending up. But yeah five out of five stars. Highly recommend this book. It is like I said probably my favorite of the year so you'll probably hear me raving about it for a very long time on this channel. Alright guys, so those were the first five books that I read for the month of June. Like I said, there are 20 books I need to talk about, so I'm splitting this up into four parts. That was part one. If you're interested in the other parts, I'll leave them down below once they're uploaded. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!